back to the news at 10. The Nigerian Medical Association in Anambra State is extending its medical services to residents displaced by floods in the state. During a visit to the Aguleri and Atani holding camps in Anambra East and Obaru local government areas, the group carried out free medical treatment and provided relief materials as it begins the 2018 Pre-Physicians Medical Outreach Week. Members of the Nigerian Medical Association, NMA, in Anambra State, arrive in Aguleri Holding Camp. Their mission is to provide medical care to those displaced by floods, in addition to the usual distribution of relief items. The Nigerian Medical Association felt that we need to assist the government our brothers and sisters for this trying moment and that is why we are here and we are here with these drugs and the food items to help uh, alleviate their suffering. The state commissioner for health commends the doctors for stepping in. You have come not only with something to eat, you have come not only with the medication but you have also come to conduct free medical services. We are marvelled. We are going to take the message to the governor and to the entire people of Anambra State. The doctors are taken round the wards, after which they commence free treatment for varying degrees of illnesses. Thank God for what they are doing. I'm so grateful about it. I don't even think of it. Or I don't even expect it. So I'm grateful for what they have done for us. <laughs> They then head to a Tani camp in Ogwari local government area where more eternally displaced persons are waiting to have their medical needs met. So we didn't pay anything, we didn't even pay cover for it. It's for free of charge. Our visit is not going to stop today, but we have to maintain a regular visit to this camp or to the camps so as to help the government to sustain this high level of health care. According to Anambra state authorities, there are 28 camps in the state for displaced persons, out of which 14 are fully occupied. And for them, such humanitarian intervention will go a long way in catering for the needs of those affected. In keeping with his resolve to complete projects initiated by his predecessor, Governor Willie Obiano has conducted the opening of 81-room Golden Chilip Hotel, Agolo. The governor says this will boost business operations as well as promote travel and tourism in the state. The impressive structure of the Golden Tulip Hotel, Agulu, Anambra State, experiences a taste of what is to come. A visit by the governor, Willy Obiano, dignitaries and guests. They've come to be part of the light opening of the facility, a precursor to the official opening in November. I believe that it will be patronized by Indian Umbra and visitors alike. Oh, yes. And I do this uh, soft opening in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The governor with his entourage takes a tour of the hotel before settling for a timeout with the management and invited guests who applaud the initiative. I think during the talk, many people saw that these were fantastic rooms, including some presidential suites. We also created a bush bar entertainment area. There is a nine-hole golf course that is also coming up because that's going to bring a lot of people to our goal. The hotel is also in line with our state's government's economic objectives for the hospitality industry and will promote the rapid urbanization of its environs. A major success story of the Opianos administration is security. This appears to be a driver for a thriving hospitality business in the state. Uh, as I'm told by my own team here on the ground, that this facility is booked virtually every weekend for the month of October by corporates, uh, Nigerian corporate bodies who are seeking places to host their staff retreats, their management retreats. And hotel is actually useless without security. It is because of the security that we have that we established through God that uh, all this is happening. Uh, in the city side, as governor, 
from the estimate I got this morning, we, we have over uh, 123 brand new hotels in Niagara that sprung up during this period. With these activities, Golden Tulip Hotel opens its doors in Anambra State to customers who would likely keep visiting if services remain impressive. Let's take a look at some business news now. Here's Anne Wilder. You first. First Bank. Thanks a lot, Ajo Business News. The International Monetary Fund has cut its global growth forecast for trade tensions between the U.S. and trading partners would hit its economic activities worldwide. But according to the latest World Economic Outlook report, which was released today, the IMF now expects the global economy to grow at 3.7% this year and next year as against the earlier forecast. Channel's business correspondent Templar Shadru is covering a meeting in Indonesia and now reports. Converging this October on Bali, Indonesia, are both of governors of the World Bank Group and finance officials from the International Monetary Funds to deliberate on economic issues of member nations. As policymakers from the public and private sectors as well as thought leaders arrive at the Western International Convention Center in Bali, there are expected to be more meetings, press briefings, as financial journalists also settle down to report the whole event. Already the International Monetary Fund has reviewed downwards its global economic forecast by 0.2% to 3.7%, citing some international trade disruptions. Not only have some downside risks, but the last we have identified and realized, the likelihood of further negative shocks to our growth forecast has risen. Growth in the United States, relieved by a pro-cyclical fiscal package, continues at a robust pace and is driving U.S. interest rates higher. But U.S. growth will decline once parts of its fiscal stimulus go into reverse. Notwithstanding the present demand momentum in the U.S., we have downgraded its 2019 growth forecast owing to the recently enacted tariffs on a wide range of imports from China and China's retaliation. China's expected 2019 growth is also marked down. The fund is expected to release the Africa Economic Outlook this Thursday local time. These and many more will be coming your way all this week from Bali, Indonesia. Kempula Shaju, Channel Television News. We'll definitely be keeping our eyes on that meeting. President Mohamed Buhari is now seeking the approval of the National Assembly to raise a fresh $2.7 billion from the international capital market to help finance deficits and other key projects in the 2018 budget. The president of Aesthetic, Dr. Bukola Saraki, read the letter at plenary today after lawmakers resumed from their annual recess. The amount which has been approved in the 2018 Appropriation Act has been expected to raise to be raised from euro bonds and other securities on the international capital market. Dear distinguished Senate President, request for the resolution of the National Assembly for one, implementation of the new external capital raising of 2.786 billion from the international capital market approved in the 2018 Appropriation Act, and two, the external capital raising of 82.54 million to refinance the balance of the $500 million matured euro bond in the international capital market. Pursuance to section 21.1 and 27.1 of the Debt Management Office, established in the Secretary Act 2003, I hereby request for distinctive and specific resolution of the National Assembly to A, issue 2.786 billion in euro bonds and other securities in the international capital market for the implementation of the new external borrowing approved in the Federal Government of Nigeria's 2018 Appropriation Act for the part financing of the 2018 budget's fiscal deficit, as well as to finance key infrastructure projects in 2018 budget, and B, issue euro bonds and other securities in the international capital market for the refinancing of 82.54 million, being the balance of the five-year 
balance of the five year 5.125 percentage 500 million euro bond issued by Nigeria that matured on 12 July 2018. The bears have maintained a quick return to the domestic market at the close of today's trading session following sell-offs of major consumer goods stocks. Let's hear more from Tosin Additional. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. The domestic stock market returned to negative territory at the close of Tuesday's trading session after recording its first rise in October on renewed profit-taking by short-term investors. The all-share index fell marginally by 0.8%, but still around the 32,000 level, while total value of listed equities fell by 10 billion naira, as sell pressure hit components of the consumer goods, insurance, and the oil and gas sector. Cornerstone Insurance clinched the top spot among 20 gainers with a 10% price increase, while Union Diagnostic posted a 9.68% drop ahead of 20 other decliners. Total volume of shares traded for the day increased by about half from Monday's session to nearly 350 million units, largely driven by the shares of Royal Exchange. That's the Stock Market Report. I'm Tosi. Additional. Thank you, Tosin. But despite ongoing tensions between Italy and the European Union over Rome's budget spending plans, the region's market have ended today's session upswing, but it's mixed performance for other major markets around the world. Let's check them out. And that's business news for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Anne Owawadu. It's back to you, Juma. You first. First bank. Thanks, Anne. The National Association of Nigerian Traders in Ghana has submitted a petition to President Muhammadu Buhari appealing for protection from xenophobic attacks in Ghana. They're also frowning on the $1 million imposed on them by the Ghanaian government before they can run their businesses in the West African country. The president of the association, Ken Okoha, notes that over 2 million Ghanaians reside in Nigeria and are conducting their businesses freely. Our correspondent, Kayla Megwa, reports. Bilateral diplomatic relations between Ghana and Nigeria have been in place since before colonialism, with migration between both countries in the late 50s and late 70s. The relationship between both countries hasn't always been pleasant. In the late 1960s, Ghana expelled large numbers of Nigerian residents for failing to adhere to immigration laws. In 1981, at a time when Ghana relied on Nigeria for about 90% of its petrol requirements, Nigeria suspended all exports to the country and then went on to expel around 1 million Ghanaian residents in 1983 and another 300,000 in 1985. May her gentle soul rest in perfect peace. Yeah. Apparently, the situation isn't that much better, as some members of various Nigerian traders groups in Ghana are asking for protection from the chairman of the Economic Community of West African States. We are presenting this petition to Mr. President. Because of what is going on, we want Mr. President to come and salvage the situation. Save our souls, correct? Yes. Save the souls of Nigerians in Ghana from xenophobic attacks, from the, 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 the dismantling of their means of livelihoods. Thank you very much. As I'm talking to you, so many of our continents are still in war because what the local did was to go and check all our trade names. And they're using it in everywhere. They have used it in GRA, and we have lost so much money to GRA. That's Ghana Revenue Authorities. The senior special advisor to President Buhari on foreign affairs and diaspora urged the traders to be law-abiding as a solution to the situation will be reached soon. The president of Ghana assured our president that Nigerian traders are not being targeted. When they said foreigners, he assured that they were not referring to African nationals. So, and as, and as at that time, which you said 27, an instruction was given 
that all those shops will be reopened. So I'm very surprised that you are here today, that as of today, which is the um, 9th of October, your shops, over 400 shops are still being closed. So I'm definitely going to convey your message to Mr. President. I appeal to you, as Mr. President has, has, has always done, to always be law-abiding. No matter the provocation, do not take any laws into your hands. The relationship between Nigeria and Ghana is a crucial one for the West African region. Trade ties are particularly important. This dispute between the two countries concerning the status of Nigerian traders in Ghana could lead to another crisis in a region that is desperately in need for a solution from the economic downturn brought about by terrorism. Kayla Megwa, Channels Television News. Still ahead on the news at 10, Super Eagles begin preparations in New York ahead of Saturday's 2019 AFCON qualifier against Libya. That's on sports. Just stay with us.